Oh, hi there. So recently I got um, 50 pieces of this WS2812 LED. It's an RGB LED. Uh, but the cool part about it, the uh, camera is not focusing on the screen very well right now, but there's a black little dot in the middle that's actually a tiny IC that does voltage regulation and it runs on an SPI communication protocol dealing with Jigger, which essentially lets you address them individually um, and daisy chain them. So they've got three little pads on the top and the bottom. Um, two uh, are to power the lights and the chip, uh, one is for ground, one is not used, and then two are for input and output. So you can essentially daisy chain these guys um, running just three wires, voltage, uh, five volts, ground, and then a data line uh, that you drive from an Arduino or AVR or a simpler chip. You can't use something more complicated like uh, the Raspberry Pi as of yet. Uh, I saw a couple of libraries that were using BitBang protocols, but it uh, doesn't look like there's too much headway with that right now. So I have one of them down here to, to show you how adorable it is. Uh, you can see the tiny little chip on in the middle there. That's where the, the brains and the goodies are at. Stupid focus, whatever. Um, I just pulled this up uh, right now. The prices on eBay fluctuate, obviously, but looks like you can get 50 for $17 uh, free shipping or 100 for $27. Um, pretty ridiculous. So I, I had no idea how to use these guys, so went to uh, SparkFun, which is one of my favorite places to go, as long as, uh, as well as Adafruit, um, for breakout boards and tutorials and stuff like that. Fortunately, it is pretty darn simple. You've got the 5 volt rail going through, data in, data out, and ground. Um, there's a capacitor right there, and I'm going to test it without it, but for my first test, uh, I did use a capacitor. Um, all their boards are open source, which is lovely. So we've got the chip here, they've got the, uh, the voltage. Um, they just have one voltage, they're not really showing it. Um, I downloaded, I think I've got the Eagle guy here somewhere. No, Eagle? Yeah, there we go. Uh, you can see that they're using the same volt rail to go uh, to power both the... Um, I can pull up the other guy. This is the actual spec sheet for it. Um, it has two power sources it needs, VCC and VDD, uh, which power the chip and the lights. VSS is for the ground, data in, data out, 4 is not used. Uh, so using their thing, I figured out uh, they want a cap, uh, which is called a decoupling capacitor, essentially to remove um, floating ground noise, which uh, is sort of a problem with a lot of amateur electronics, aka all of mine. Um, so we've got goodies here, we've got the voltage do jambles there, numbers, fun stuff, who cares about that, downloading stuff, blah blah blah, and here's the NeoPixel um, library. Uh, they call it NeoPixel just because they're fun addressable pixels. Adafruit has all sorts of really cool stuff that I'd like to eventually get into um, for uh, wearable electronics. Um, so you can sew these, uh, they, she calls them NeoPixels, but it's essentially a breakout board for this uh, RGB LED. And you can sew them into all your clothes all over the place using conductive thread and have all sorts of fun, cool, interactive clothing for like GPS or the weather or temperature, who cares, whatever, it's fun. Um, and that's essentially it. So here's it running. Um, kind of surprised it actually worked. Uh, given how tiny they are, you need a steady hand and a very, very tiny soldering iron. Or, I guess you could use solder paste and, you know, there's all sorts of different ways of doing it. But, on the back end, you can see, uh, it's never going to focus on that. Oh well, there's a cap, uh, just a, a 0.1 CU, or UF, uh, capacitor going between the, uh, the 5 volt rail and one of the pads it goes to, um, which decouples that. But this is a pretty awesome bright RGB LED, and considering they're daisy chainable and off of just one pin on the Arduino, so if you can imagine we've got this dude here, I could have another one sitting right on top of it, and 
I think you can address, uh, it really depends on the frequency. I don't think there is any actual limit. Uh, I can look at their thingamajig on here. Um, it's something stupid like, uh, you, I, don't, I don't have to even have it. There's a, there's a formula depending on how, how uh, the, the frequency you have, the amount of memory you have and whatnot, how many you can actually drive and at what uh, frames per second. But it, it's something stupid like three, four, five thousand of them you can drive off a single input output, which is just awesome. Um, considering input outputs are sort of a commodity uh, depending on the chips you use. Uh, like my adorable little Digisparks, which um, some uh, people have been having uh, success. Oh, now you're going to focus. Cool. Uh, people have been having success driving them off of these suckers. Uh, they're essentially the same um, programming language. That's AVR. If this is just an AtTiny85 on there. And uh, I'll probably use a couple of these guys. Uh, these guys I'm not as... Uh, happy to use in other projects, mainly because they don't have serial. Uh, they emulate it over the USB. Uh, it eats up a chunk of memory on this guy, but whatever. Uh, point of the video was to show off this thing, and look at it go. All those colors. Okay, bye.